bright and beautiful and uh, quiet. I, I wish I was on the Christmas list, on the birthday list. I didn't get that. <laughs> I missed that list. No, but I love her dearly. Um, and I praise God for her testimony of life. Because even when we're not at our best feeling-wise, she still, sh her, her, her essence was showing through. That she was still here and so present. And the care that our family has given it's just second to none, Maxine. I just have to say that that shows what she poured in you as a single parent. It shows what she poured in you and Clarence and Robert and Roseanne as a Thetford name, that we do hold honor to that. And don't take that lightly that she were making that sacrifice. So my prayer for you is that God would give you greater, greater and greater as your years go on and that he will restore you and that you feel strong in what you have done, because that is not easy to do. So take take homage in that. And all of you, because she knows how much you loved, and she loved you and sacrificed for you, right? So God bless you. Love you all. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll now have the following by Ms. Kelly Willard. I don't see her. Okay, I don't know where she is right now, so let's keep moving. So, yeah. and so we'll have her glance up later. Okay, all right, so moving on, I just want to give you a few words, and uh, and then we're going to move on with the ceremony. Um, and they are their sister and rest, okay? So I just want to tell you all, you know, uh, grief of someone that you love um, can be long-suffering. And when we walk away and move on about our lives, this family can still be suffering for years afterwards because it's hard to lose someone. And so I just want you to make sure that you remember them. Just pick the phone up and say, hey, you doing okay today? Just wanted to check on you. Just want to make sure everything is good. You know, is there anything I can do for you? You know, and um, just be present for one another, okay? Okay. And so, someone mentioned earlier about a mother's love, so I'm just going to ride on that. You know, a mother's love is a heart of her family. Um, it is patient, it is loving, it is forgiving, unless it's my mom, of course, but we're not here for her. But anyway, it's loving, it's patient, it's forgiving, it's sacrificial. Um, she would do anything for the sake of her children. Um, it's also unconditional, and it's whole. No matter how many children are involved, her love is whole. No matter how many times it's divided, it still comes up whole for each person. And so it's guiding, and it's forever, and it's eternal. And although our dear sister has departed from the world, it doesn't mean that her love for her children and her family and her friends no longer exists. It very well does still exist. And every time I do a home-going service, I remind the people how important it is to love your family. Tomorrow is not promised, and we really have to make every day count. Circumstances arise every single day that remove one of our loved ones from our hands. People leave the house every single day and expect to come home, and some of them don't make it back home. And so tomorrow is not promised, and we need to be aware of that at all times. We all have an appointment to see the Lord, and every human being is going to exit this world. I'm going to, and you are going to, too. And many have gone home before us to show us that life is not forever. Death has an appointment to see each and every one of us. It's always shocking when someone goes home and they leave the earth, but God is never shocked. God is never shocked when someone comes home. He knew when she was going to be born and he knew when she was going to return back to him. Well, how does God know so much? I'm glad you asked that question. I'm going to tell you. First, he is God. He is maker and ruler of all things. He knows all things. There are no surprises in him. If we could just look at the book of Jeremiah, 
I never do a service without mentioning Jeremiah because somebody needs to hear this. And Jeremiah is so profound. And God is having this conversation in the first book of Jeremiah with Jeremiah, and he's telling him, I need you to go on this assignment. He has called him to do a work. And a young Jeremiah is a little reluctant. And so I say a young Jeremiah because when we look at Bible characters, we look at them as some ancient, old individual that have been living forever. No, that's not always the case. Some of these characters are young. And Jeremiah is young, and he believes that the people will not receive him. And so God has this conversation with Jeremiah, and he's telling Jeremiah some stuff about him. And he tells him, Jeremiah, he says, before I placed you in the womb of your mother, he says, I already knew you. That is such a deep sentence. He said, I already knew you, Jeremiah. Now, let's take a look at what God is saying and give our maker his ownership. He said, Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in the womb, he said, I knew you. Before is a past tense word. How does God know him before the womb? Of course he knows him. It was part of the creation process. And so God is saying, before I, God uses the word I to identify himself. He says, I formed you in the womb. In other words, Jeremiah, I made you. I shaped you. I molded you. I, God, formed you to my liking. Now, I want to stop there because I don't care what nobody say about you in this world. You are formed to God's liking. Okay? You are, you are everything that God wanted you to be. Those eyes, your nose, that big butt, whatever it is that you got, God put it all together, right? Exactly. So he says, I knew you. God uses a past tense word. I knew you. So what is God saying here? He's saying, I got my first glimpse at you. He said, I knew you and I knew all about you. Listen, if God past tense shaped, molded, and knew Jeremiah, then surely he knew when he would arrive to the womb and he knew when he would return back to him. It's the same way for you and for me. God knows you and he knew you and before this, you know, before you even hit the world, God knew exactly who you were. He knew you before he placed you in the womb. And I know what you're thinking. My mom and dad had something to do with it. Yeah, he brought them two together when you were born out of that. But there was no breath and no life in that womb without God. So it's the same way for you and me. God knows us. He knows you. He knows all about you. He knows the secrets of you. He knows the chambers of your heart. He knows the hidden sin that no one else can see. And he knows what you're doing when no one else is watching. Come on now. He don't have to take the rooftop up top of your house to look in to see what's really good there. He is all seeing and he is all knowing. Yes, we all have sin and yes, we all have made mistakes. But there are no mistakes in God. He is a perfect God. And everything he does is always in his control. A lot of us have dealt with some things in life where we can't go back and change our past. But we can change our future and our destiny by choosing and deciding for Christ. Many of us are great sinners, but Jesus is a great Savior. There is grace and forgiveness for you at the cross of Jesus. Now, I'm telling you this because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Miss Marie would want her family to hear about Jesus. Amen. So there is grace and forgiveness for you at the cross. There are no mistakes in God. He is an intentional God. He intentionally made you. He intentionally shaped and molded you. And he knew our, our, our dear sister also like he knew you and I. He knew she was coming home. Nobody's going to throw up to the to the show up to the throne of God without him knowing that they were coming. You just don't show up at the throne of God. He already knows you're on your way, and he is all seeing and all knowing. People won't just show up. He has to call them home. And although he she has gone home, the Lord will grant you peace in the midst of this storm. Philippians 4.16 says, He will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. 
Some of you may go back to work and you might be smiling and somebody might say, well, what you smiling for? Didn't you just lose somebody? That's God's peace upon you that you can smile. Okay? And so Jesus offers us peace and he offers himself. When he, when he offers us peace, he is actually offering us himself because he is the prince of peace. So he is offering himself to us. And so you see, peace is not the absence um, it's not the absence of trouble in the world. Trouble is what we want to see, okay? Death we are going to see. Peace is truly the result of the awareness of the presence of God in our life. Hear the promise of the Lord in Deuteronomy 31 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. Can't beat that. He goes before you and he shall be with you. He said he shall never leave you and he shall never forsake you. He said do not be discouraged. No need to fear. Jesus said he will never leave you, which means he shall be with you no matter what you are going through. You shall see storms in your life. Storms are going to arise in your life. We're going to see troubles and we're going to see trials. And if you haven't seen any, if you haven't lived long enough to see any, wait till that election's over. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Wait till the election's over. Everybody on earth is not going to be happy. Okay? And so the tides may cast us away, and even Jesus can control the seas. All he has to do is speak a word and say, peace, be still, and all things are going to come to a cease. Yeah. See, family, keep your trust in Jesus. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. So there's no question about who's coming for you. Jesus said, I will come for you and I will receive you unto myself. He said, I go and I prepare a place for you. Mm -mm -mm. This is his promise to those who believe. Do you believe? Marie will want me to present Jesus to her family today. She has received him to herself. She's in good hands. If you believe anything about life and death, believe Jesus. Amen. Listen, people, life is winding down. Amen. The world we know it, as we know it, is winding down. And perilous times are coming ahead. They are among us right now. And the world we know is about to change. And you better know Jesus. Amen. Times are going to arise when you're going to need to call on Jesus. Oh, yeah. If you won't make it through this lifetime, you're going to have to somewhere call on Jesus. Get yourself and your family into a church and turn your attention to the Christ. I got to tell you this because Miss Marie will want me to tell you about the importance of you knowing who Jesus is. Yes, I know some of you are uncomfortable in here with all this Jesus stuff. I don't care. I don't care. I'm trying to get your soul saved. And so, so, so Jesus said, those who believe in me shall be saved. Well, you may say, I'm a believer. Demons believe. Demons believe that the Christ is who he is. It don't make them no Christian. They know Jesus exists. They know who he is. It don't make them no Christian. Have you honestly just prayed and asked Jesus into your heart as your Lord and as your Savior? Yes. Marie is good. She knew the Lord. She is with the Lord. See, funerals aren't for those who have passed on. They are for the living. They are for you. Where will you spend eternity? Mm -hmm. Jesus promises, promises eternal life. Titus 1-2 says, and the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. He already promised it to you. He has no reason to lie. God doesn't have to lie. Who are we that he would have to lie to us and we can't even produce our next breath? You have no power to produce your next breath. Now you can sit there and you can all you want to, but guess who gave that to you? That's right. Jesus did. Yes. Will you get to know him or when you come in front of him, will he say, away from me? 
Well, he said, I never knew you away from me. Now, I know folks have influenced you and they say God didn't exist. Or maybe someone asked God for something and he didn't perform it and they say, oh, he ain't real. He didn't answer what I wanted him to do. He's not real. Let them believe what they want to believe, okay? Pick your Bible up and read. Don't believe what the world says, but believe him who made the world. Believe what he says. There's only one voice in this world that you need to believe, and that's the voice of Jesus. Now listen to me. Some of you have made it. You got to where you was going to. You feel like God wasn't a part of it, and you did wonderful things with your life, okay? Some of you may even have the house on the hill. You're doing good. Some of you got the, the fancy car in the parking lot right now, and some of you got the white picket fence at home, okay? Some of you made it onto the who's who's list of life. You are somebody. People know you. You got status, but guess what? God is no respecter of persons. That means nothing to him. I don't care what you own. Okay, you can be as fine as you want to be. You can have the body that's made of sugar and spice and everything that's nice. You can have all the money in the bank. The rappers once said, money, power, respect. What's the key to life? Well, they didn't know what the key to life is, but I'm going to tell you today, the key to life is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. Thank you. They didn't know what it was, but now you do. The key to life is Jesus Christ. It is the only name that salvation shall come by. Amen. Jesus said, if you deny me before man, I'm, I'm going to deny you before my father. Amen. And I'm going to tell you this, you ain't going to get in no other way because you're not coming in unless you come in by him. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. No man, no man comes before the father except by me. There's no other way in. I don't care what you heard. I don't care what somebody told you. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the way. No man is coming to my Father unless you come through me. You ain't going to just show up. You can't be neutral. You can't say, no, I'm just going to be neutral. No, nah, that's not going to work. You can't straddle the fence. That's not going to work. It's either you will accept him or you won't. So the question is, what's in your heart today? Is your heart filled with hatred? Is it filled with malice? Is it filled with jealousy? Is it filled with pride? Jesus wants you to be free. He wants you to have the best life possible. He wants you to stop carrying around this bag full of pain and hurts. He wants you to put it down. We're going to face so much stuff in this lifetime. People are going to do stuff to you. People are going to say stuff about you. People are going to hurt you. And if you could look at some of us and what we look like in the spirit, we would look like Santa Claus. We got a huge bag on our back that we carry that got all this stuff in. So-and-so said I'm ugly. Throw it in the bag. So-and-so said I'm stupid. Throw that in the bag. So-and-so said I ain't never going to amount to nothing. Throw that in the bag. And next thing you know, we carrying all this stuff in life that's weighing us down, that's stopping us from being the best that God wants us to be. He wants you to put that stuff down. He said, come to me, all of you, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Amen. There is rest in Jesus. Thank you. Let your heart find rest today. Amen. Marie will want me to ask you to come to Christ. She will want you to know that she had already made a decision to make Jesus her savior. She will want you to know, she will want me to ask you, where will you spend your eternity? Because death is going to come for all of us, okay? Somebody casket might have already just arrived in town. We don't know that. I'm sorry, I gotta keep it real. I 